Let me show you all something. See all these little weeds and stuff that like to grow in the driveway? Well, if you can't tell, we have a very long and large driveway. And then my mom and even my mother-in-law also have very long and large driveways. I'm getting tired of spraying this stuff by hand. It takes me hours, not just a little bit, like hours. So to spray all this, there's, it takes me a good four hours throughout the day. I'm to a point where I'm just tired of doing that because this is the problem. I've sprayed all of this already. Sprayed this early in the spring and you can see that we got most of it. However, because we didn't spray every little square inch, what killed off, so like this stuff that all killed off, it still allowed other stuff to grow back because we didn't cover it. So now I'm to the point where I'm not gonna waste my time with all this nonsense. I've got a solution. Until today, this is what we've been using and it's worked great. I'm tired of dealing with this because it takes a long time to cover everything. And even then, like you've seen, we still end up missing spots because they didn't have any weeds there to really kind of mark what we hit. So this way, kind of sucks. This is my new solution. Another problem. This will not work with my existing tank that's in the back of my side-by-side. -side. The pump itself is too small, and not only that, but realistically, 15 gallons is gonna go really quick when you're covering that kind of area because we spray 15 gallons on a pretty small area when we're doing it by hand. I get it, this is going to work much well. I do understand though that this is going to use much less and that 15 gallon tank probably would have worked, but we went another route. Now personally, we went with an ag spray equipment sprayer and it had really good reviews. We seemed to think everybody liked it that bought it, didn't see a whole lot of complaining about it. And just to be quite honest, it seems like when I buy stuff from a local farm store like Orsalins or Baumgars, you know, I'm not saying that their stuff is garbage or anything like that, but I'm saying I don't seem to have very good luck with it. I bought this online at Agzaga or Agzaga. I'm not exactly sure how you say it, but what I like about it is a few things. It is stout, like super robust. Like you have handles and stuff here to pick it up. Um, you'll see here in a second once I get this out. Don't judge me for the mess that was in the back of my side-by-side. -side. We're busy. That is actually not, not very heavy. I mean, it, it's thick, it's solid, but it's not as heavy as I was expecting. Looks like there is a filter right there. That's pretty good. I'm not exactly sure what this does. Pretty stout. It's definitely uh, solid, 65 gallons. So the model number for this is FSUTV65. And like I said, I got it on agzaga.com. I'll put a link down in the description. Um, I don't have any codes or anything that's gonna give you a discount, but you know, you'll see where I got it from. I, uh, I like how stout it is. I know the lid for sure is made in the USA, but I'm not 100% sure on everything else. The, uh, this thing is stout, geez. Like super strong looking. It, uh, look how thick this plastic is. Look how thick this is. Like, that is, that's thick. That is three-eighths of an inch or better. Now, just for simple comparison over here, yes, this still has spray in it because I haven't emptied it. The lip right here is about that, but that's just it. It's just a lip. The actual neck here is only about maybe an eighth inch. Whereas on this one, it's the entire thing. It goes down. That is a solid stout piece. Um, I love the, the measuring cup built into the lid. I love how this measuring cup is built into the lid. That is pretty awesome. Um, it even looks like it's got a hole there so you can just put the, uh, the hose right down there through it. That is cool. 
The wand is, that's probably the same one I actually had because I bought this. The one I have over here somewhere, right here. This is an aftermarket one that I bought and is far better quality than the crappy Chinesium one that came with that sprayer that I, when I first bought it, but it quit after, actually we didn't even make it a full month before it quit. So these bars go in here and, oops, oopsie. Oh, that wasn't smart on my part. Well, don't get carried away like Travis did. If you do something dumb like I did and you drop that bolt down in there, if you take a magnet and you put it on a screwdriver, you can set it in there and grab the end, it'll hold the end of it and you can pull it back through. That's the moral of that story. Don't be an idiot. Anyhow, so this goes right through like that. And it actually looks like you can do it different ways. I'm gonna do it this way because I don't need it to stick out very far. All right, so if you're gonna put this in the back of a side-by-side, -side, it takes up, at least on a Polaris Ranger, it takes up the whole bed pretty much. There's a little bit of a gap up there, you know, maybe a half inch or so, and then uh, about an inch back here as well. So like nothing's gonna rub kind of a thing. And there's a gap on each side as well, like a good size gap. So you have room to store things. If you're gonna store something in here though, I'd highly recommend it be this side because this side doesn't have anything else running on it. And if you look right there, it's got it set up to where you could move that pump, I guess, to this side, which, no, I'm sorry, it's set up for something else on that side. So that's good. Just so you know, this came with everything. I, there's no other parts I had to buy. This is all what came together. It's a nice control wire setup that allows me to just simply connect directly to my batteries. If I don't break these things before I get it together. Uh, directly to the battery, and it's got an on off switch right there, which I do wish the on off switch was further up, but that's okay. I am far from being a genius, but this was very simple to put together. There's this bracket right here, comes with the sprayer itself. There's a quick, this is a handheld nut basically that you don't require tools to adjust. Your boom comes with this U-bolt and it's already got this rubber isolator on there. Line that up, make it the centered or however you'd wish to have it. And then get this, so like I want mine right there. I want it centered on this A because that's the center of my side-by-side. -side. There we go. And then all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tighten these two U-bolts and that'll lock that in place. This is already locked in place. Everything else in here is, is good to go. Just gotta put a couple like the pressure gauge on here and then throw our power cable in. Power, the pressure gauge already pre-thread uh, pre taped. Look at that, screw it right in, done. Oops. Now, I don't like to stand on my head to read these, so I'm going to set it to where it's upright. So right here, there's two holes. It looks like there's gonna be two more on that side right there to be where these are at. I have not looked at the instructions at all. Like that's how self-explanatory and simple this is. Um, all right, everything's installed, boom and all. So came with the hose clamp, came with this hose. Everything was ready to go. I had absolutely no responsibility to provide any hardware, cables, nothing. Everything was here and made the installation super easy. You only need a tool, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter wrench for, to add the boom for the U-bolts and you'll need a Phillips screwdriver, a uh, number two Phillips screwdriver to get all this together. Took me, well we're at 12 minutes right now and that's with me stopping, moving cameras and everything else. It's really simple. Everything seems very stout. Like I can push down right here. I can't do anything. Like I'm not flexing that tank at all. Now, obviously in the center, yeah, you're gonna flex it some because it's hollow there. 
Um, handles are super sturdy. Now I'm not saying you could pick it up with 65 gallons of water in there, but I'm saying that it is stout and I don't think you're going to damage it just simply moving it around with them handles. The only thing is one thing, one, one minor little thing that I don't like. And not so much I don't like is that I think it could have been, I think it could have been designed a little bit better. And that is the power cable, my switch. Oh, you guys ain't gonna be able to see because there's not enough light in here. My switch is right here. So that switch is what turns this on and off. That's the only thing I don't like. I, I'm gonna do something to make it to where I can turn this on and off, like on, on command with it in my hand rather than have to reach across the side by side or even come back here to turn the boom off kind of thing. I'll, I'll figure something out for that. I'm going to stop it at 15 because one, I want to make sure that that tank or that pump rather has enough water in there to pull from. Two, I need to mix some spray and that's about how many gallons I need. So after I get done with my testing, which shouldn't take too long, I'll be, uh, be in pretty good shape. I really can't believe like, I know that it seems like I keep going on and on, but like the quality from this product is far superior and granted I'm used to that little 15 gallon tank. Um, you know, I've replaced the pump on it twice, three times actually and it, it just is what it is we've had it for four years five years four or five years and uh you know it's done the job but like i said time is money and for me this was worth the investment so i saved six hours in the spring and another six hours in the fall plus this also gives me some other opportunities so i'm sure you saw that tractor in the shop when we were kind of or maybe you didn't we have a, a large tractor that we use to spray all of our pastures and hay fields and everything. So like if we need to spread um, or cover a, a large spread of land, yeah, we use that. But sometimes I only need a little spot to spray and this would be ideal for that because I can use the, the wand for spots or if it's a, say a larger spot, I don't have to use the wand. I can just make a quick pass up to 30 feet, I believe is what this does. All right, we've got just a tickle over 15 gallons, which is fine. I have the pump on. It's probably working on being primed here. There it goes. All right, so there's our spray pattern. I know you're not gonna be able to see it clear as day or anything like that, but you can obviously see where it's hitting. You can see that it's got a good amount of overlap here in the center, which that's not a problem. I mean, I'd rather it overlap some than miss strips. I guess you can kind of see it right there, how it's spraying. The center is a perfect mist, but the uh, outside nozzles, they're not quite the same, but they're obviously set for a different pattern because they're set to go out to the side and they needed to project more. So let's, uh, let's mix this up and use it. All right, like I mentioned from the beginning, I am really loving this idea. A measuring cup built into the lid. I mean, it makes it to where it's, obviously it's not impossible to lose it, but it does make it much more difficult to lose it. It looks like they have some provisions if you break it. There's a, it looks like it's threaded into the, um, the top or the bottom of the lid, I guess, technically. And there's a tab right there. It looks like you either need to pull this up, yep, like just like that. Matter of fact, there we go. Yep, so if I want to do that, I'll just take it right off, actually. Perfect. So I would say that if you broke it or, you know, a catastrophe kind of thing happened, you wouldn't have to buy a whole lid to get it. You could just simply buy the cup from them. So I like that. I like that a lot. And it's built into where, like I said, you can, you've got that hole right there if you want to put the uh, hose through there instead of taking the lid off to fill it. Now, I will say that I probably didn't need 65 gallon capacity. I likely could have gotten away with 45 gallons pretty easily. However, like I said, we spray a lot of surface area and I'm basing it off of how much I used before. So to do my entire driveway and the uh, feedlot and the driveway next to the barn, I used a total of about 45 gallons. And I looked at it as, well, I'd rather have a little extra in case I use more this way, but I'm pretty confident I'm gonna end up using less 
for the simple fact that I'm not gonna spray over spaces twice and that mist is gonna cover everything much simpler than what it would have before.